the secret of building your own house. One of the secrets of success in the life of Solomon and one of the secrets of success in your own life is to decide to build your own house. Many people think that it is only fantastically rich people who build houses. But as, you, as we will be talking today and discussing and having a conversation with you, you will realize that that is not true. Solomon built a house for himself, not because he was fantastically rich, but because of something you will see that he had. Because of Solomon building a house for himself, that was one of his major contributions to his success. If you want to prosper, you must decide, I will build my own house. And at it, houses. If you're a greater lover, anywhere the church will have a location. One of the prophecies of being a greater lover is anywhere the church will have a location, you'll have a home. Amen. You'll be a man of many houses. Amen. You'll have flats in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll have own compounds in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll have beach properties in Jesus' name. Amen. The prophecy you believe is the prophecy that works for you. Saying you'll have beach houses in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you want to be a millionaire, you must decide, I'm going to build a house. And not just one house, several houses. Several? So 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 1. But Solomon took the tears to build his own house. So he finished all his house. How great was that house that he took 13 years to build? And he had money. So, not like he was, the building was going like that because there was no money. It just means that the, the duration that was needed to build the house was 13 years. The detail that was needed to finish that house would only have taken 13 years. One house, and he had several. Verse 2. He also built the house of God. No, sorry. He also built the house of the forest of Lebanon. So that's another house. The land was 100 cubits. And its width, 50 cubits. And the, and the height, 30 cubits with four rows of cedar pillars and cedar beams on the pillars. House number two. Uh -huh. And it was paneled with cedar above the beams that were on 45 pillars, 15 to a row. So the man was rich. The man was. So the reason why the Bible is showing you all those details is to show you that the details involved in building of that house is what made the building of the house last for 13 years. So Solomon's success was seen by his ability to build. And Solomon was a very wise man. So one of the things that wisdom made him to do was to build houses. Because a builder is a wise man. Repeat after me. A builder, a builder. is a wise man. Nobody who builds is not wise. Even if they build my top house, they are wise. Any sort of building comes from wisdom. If you've not built anything, it is a show of your lack of wisdom. Some of you have not even built your life. I'm talking to you. You are yet even to build your own life. You are 27 and you are living with your mother. When I said, Mommy, teach you Meisha. Ah, I'm, look at me, I'm talking to you. Why are you looking away? Mommy, teach you Meisha. Unaiba kukuzake, unauza. You steal your mother's chicken and sell so that you can go and bet. You're not wise. And that's the one you call the pillar of your strength. Oh, girls, I pity you. Your pillar of strength. <laughs> so there are two types of people. 
those who accumulate wealth and those who spend their wealth. There are two types of people. Those who accumulate wealth and those who spend their So of these two, which one do you think you are? Are you those who accumulate? Or are you those who spend? While at it, I would also like you to know that both of these people have an inflow of money and riches. Those who spend and those who accumulate, all of them have an inflow. Money is coming. But there is one who has the wisdom of when money comes in, when money does what? I'm talking to you. When money comes in, he accumulates it. And then there is you. When money comes in, you spend it. You get cravings. Before money came, you did not crave pizza. Pizza was not anything that you craved for. But the, the moment, you've received 200 from Mpesa, from so and so, automatically you start craving for ice cream. You start saying, if I get an ice cream right now, I need to go to KFC. KFC, there is something like for ice cream. Yeah, I need ice cream at KFC. You go and get ice cream. But there's another one when he receives 200. Number one, he gives his tithe and then he saves 20% of what he has. Do you know what made Joseph rich was to save 20% for the sake of Egypt? 20% only made Joseph rich. I keep telling you, when you get your money, 20% must go into savings. How many do it? You spend everything. Kate, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to you direct. I'm not going through the corners. You will, not start, you will not start saving when you have millions. You start savings when you have hundreds. Because saving is a discipline. You are not poor because money is not coming into you. You are poor because you have no discipline to save. You think that I'll start saving the day I get thousands. And you will not get to thousands because you're not saving hundreds. What will help you get to thousands is because you're saving hundreds. People don't become rich because of inflow of money. People become rich because they can accumulate what comes into them little by little. I repeat, people don't become rich because of inflow of money. People become rich because of inflow of money and saving, accumulating what is coming in. Many of you think that you are poor because you don't have an inflow of money. But I want to let you know, you are not poor because you don't have an inflow of money. You are poor because any little thing that comes into you, you eat it. You eat. You, you are always happy being broke. You are happiest when you have nothing. You are most calm and peaceful. <laughs> you, are most, <laughs> you are most calm and peaceful when you have no money. <laughs> when you are empty, you are calm and peaceful. When you are empty, you don't abuse people. When you are, when you are calm, when you are empty, you don't, you don't have issues with anybody. You are not boasting. You are not posting anything. Mm -mm. If we see posting, 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 we know, ah, money has come. That is called your thermostat. That is called your? If today I give you five million shillings, your brain will not rest. Your brain will not until your money dances down to your thermostat. If your thermostat is 10,000, you will not rest until you are at 10,000. When you are telling them, you are going to say, hey, to find your money, what do we do? What, what do we do with this money? And that's, that's your thermostat. <laughs> and I'm sure many of you have been there. You know what I'm saying? You are given 500,000 by your parents to go and start a business. Or even given 100,000 to go and buy something. Do, maybe you are given, go and, go and help your life. Take this 100,000. You do not, you do, not do what, you, what, what they wanted. You say 100,000, that's a lot of money. Your thermostat is at 5,000. You spend the money until when you go to around 6,000, you start saying, hey, we need to buy and do this. 
When you go to 5,000, it's when your brain told you, hey, wake up. Hmm? Unadu nini wewe? Your financial thermostat. Your financial? A thermostat is what regulates temperatures in the AC. It either makes the room hot or the room cold. It's a thermostat. When it's too cold, it raises the temperature to make it a little bit warm, room temperature. When it's too hot, it brings it down to room temperature. It's called a thermostat. And everybody has a financial thermostat. Your financial thermostat is the kind of money your brain can handle at a time. Peacefully. Without chaos. Without chaos. Some of you, your financial thermostat is 1,000. So if your parents make a mistake of sending you 10,000, Apana, omekumalo. Omekufanya, omekumaliza. Omekufinish. Omekufinish, kumalo. Wanakwambi, unanda kwambia watu, my style ni deadly, deadly. Nikufinish, nikumalo. My style ni deadly, deadly. You must style the dead. By the time you must style the dead, the dead living in Una donjo na kudunda. Kazi yako ni kudonjo na kudunda. Kudonjo na. By the time you know, you come nine nine nine. Masema ay. Manzi imagine jana ni likona ten k. Ni likona ten k. Ten k. Mimi likona ten k tia na mimi. She does not go to Malaysia. You are always in that cycle. Always. Always. So, Maggie, you're not, you're not poor because your, your boss is paying little. You are poor because the financial thermostat you have is too low. So, even if the boss gives you 50,000, it must dance down to your financial thermostat. It must dance down. Una choice. It must dance down to your financial thermostat. And others, you save to spend. Which is even worse. You just have postponed cravings. You accumulate, spend. Accumulate. At what you save, no care to. What you save, you save. 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 You save, you save. That's called a sinking fund. It is of no use. We save to invest. To grow, to multiply. We don't save to spend. You are taught, the people who taught you savings misled you. They told you, we save. Ukutaku no TV, save. So, akidi yako inakwambianga, to you only save when you have a need. You only save when you have a need. Or you save for emergency. Okay, there is a type of saving like that. It's called an emergency fund. That's different. I'm talking about these ones who save to spend. Kuna save upeleke girlfriend out. Maggie. <laughs> Afali, but don't save. Because that kind of saving is postponing of cravings. Tell me about the man is talking to you. <laughs> the man knows you're here. <laughs> the man is going to finish and going to And going to finish and going to be deadly. So Solomon was a wise man because he did what? He built. Tell me, you'll only become wise if you build. So don't forget this little secret. If you want to become like Solomon, you must build something for yourself. You must do what? I can't hear you. You must do what? You see, one group of people accumulate wealth wisely. And they do this by building and investing. The other group is often into outward impressive things. These ones spend their money in having a good time and killing it on the gram. Their work is to impress people by buying new shoes, new clothes, going to new restaurants, wearing designer clothes. Not, not real designer. Balance, not Balenciaga. Balenciaga. <laughs> Balenciaga. They can't afford Balenciaga. Theirs is Bala 
Siaga. Adibos. Didas. Mike. That's the kind I'm talking about. And there are many in this room. Some of them are looking at me. They are living to impress. They are living to make people happy. They are living to kill it on the gram. Me, at me, she has to in private. Nani, nani, in in private. You are a fool. And then you think that is wisdom. It's not wisdom. Wisdom is not seen by your impressive looks. Wisdom is seen by your investment and what you build. That's where wisdom is. That's where wisdom. So don't forget this little secret. When all is said and done, people who build end up more wealthy than people who don't build. My good friends, if you want to become like Solomon, you must build something for yourself. If you want to become like Solomon, you must do what? A building or a property is in actual sense a type of saving. Because buildings and properties appreciate in value over time. So this represents the accumulation of wealth. You cannot spend your money on cars. Do you know a car depreciates in value if you go to maybe a showroom? The moment you ignite the car, chong, yong, 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 and spark the engine. Just like that. If you bought the car for 3 million, they cannot buy it for 3 million. They will buy it for 2.9. A car depreciates in value the moment you drive out of the showroom. But buildings and properties will always keep appreciating in value. A few years ago, an acre of land at, in Upper Hill was 1 billion Kenya shillings. Now, I've not even checked, but I'm sure it's above 10 billion, if not 100 billion. But there was a car that was being sold for 13 million five years ago. Now it's being, told, it's being sold for 3.4 million. People don't become rich by being flashy. People become rich by investing in things that accumulate in value. People become rich by? Yes. People that, people think that grow in value. That is why Jesus told us, do not store your wealth in earthly things. Store it in heaven. Where thieves and months Thieves cannot break and months cannot eat. He said, store your value in spiritual things. Pause. Let me show you something in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It was not part of my sermon, but now that I've mentioned this, I think it's connected to that. Look at this. Blessed be the God of our Father, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want you to take note of spiritual blessing, number one. Number two, take note of heavenly places. And number three, take note of in Christ Jesus. So there's spiritual blessings. Let's deal with spiritual blessings. God decided before the foundations of the earth that I'm going to bless these people with a blessing. And this blessing, I'm going to store it in a format called spiritual. There is a reason why he chose to store this blessing in a spiritual format and nat not a natural format. Now, I want you to imagine this. One of the spiritual blessings we have in Jesus is what? Health. Right? By his stripes we are made whole. Right? Now I want you to imagine if God had decided to store that blessing in a natural format, in a drug form. When Jesus was going to the cross, which kinds of diseases were there? Leprosy. Right? Uh, palsy. Because of the boy was brought to him who was, had palsy. Uh, the issue of blood, the woman who had the issue of blood, or who had the issue of blood, then blindness, blind Matimaias. Do you have? A, do, you, do you know of another one? Which other one? 
Chris, are you normal? He's today. I don't know. Where, are you high? Come down. Or you are the ones who should come to your heavenly places. You are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. <laughs> anyway, so those are the ones we know. I, if they are others, I, I can't remember. Now, imagine if at that time there were only those, like, let's assume there were only those four diseases. If God would have decided to store his blessing for health in those four diseases, what would be treating cancer now? What would be treating malaria now? What will be treating HIV now? What will be treating COVID now? So God in his wisdom decided that the blessing I'm going to give these people will not be in a natural format, will be in a heavenly format called spiritual. So that anything that is spiritual transcends anything physical. Right? And spiritual things don't lose value over space and time. Spiritual things gain value over space and time. Let me explain that. If right now I give you 5 million Kenya shillings and you go to the US, okay, I give you 5 million Kenya shillings. In Kenya, you are a millionaire. Yeah. Senor, yeah. because you are 5 million. If you go to the US, are you still a millionaire? Yeah. Why? The money you have, when you take it to a different space, which in this case is a location, called the United States, and you go there, you've traveled, right? You've spent time. Yes. The money has lost value, yes. right? So what was 5 million Kenya shillings in the U.S. could be roughly $50,000. $37,000. So are you a millionaire? You're not even a hundred millionaire. It's $37,000. But in Kenya, you are a millionaire. But in the U.S.? So God realized that if he gives us his blessing in a natural format, the format you would have used in his days, maybe they used to use talents, right? And denarius. One talent, we were told you have to work for 16 years to get it, right? A amplified version quantifies 10, one talent to $10 million. Sour. So basically, if God gives you one talent, it's like he has given you $10 million. Dollars. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars is not much at this age. But in those age it was. That's why God decided that he is going to put or that people are saying ten million dollars is much in their heads are saying, Pastor, we're leaving. No. <laughs> it's not much compared. Compared. Are we together? I hope I'm talking to intelligent people. So God decided he is going to give us blessing in a spiritual format. So that even if you go to America, if the blessing of God is on you, you succeed. If you go to Somalia, if the blessing of God is on you, you succeed. So the blessing you've received is not limited to time and space, location. That's why if God has blessed you anywhere you are, you prosper. If the blessing of God is on you, if you if you're in Kenya, you prosper. If you go to Tanzania, you prosper. If you go to Somalia, you prosper. Because the blessing is in a spiritual format. And the spirit transcends the natural. So wherever you are, you can access that blessing. That's why he number one, he decided to bless us in Christ Jesus by, by blessing us with spiritual blessings. Number two, he decided that spiritual blessing will have a vault it is stored in, not a bank. Because in a bank, it, people can break in and steal. A bank can collapse. In America recently, last year, we saw a bank collapsing at, in the Silicon Valley. And a lot, of the, a lot of people's money got lost. Even here in Kenya, we had a bank, Chase Bank, that collapsed. It was chased by the economy. We had another bank called the Imperial Bank that collapsed with people's money, with the depositors' money. You know when a bank collapses, what means what? All your money has been lost. All your money has been lost. Your five million is gone. If you're not a millionaire, they don't even pay you. They only pay millionaires. Ten, they only pay the depositors who are into millions. Where ten thousand yako, ten k yako. Inatumika kuwalipa. Inatumika kuwalipa. Seven hundred bob yako. Unambiwa wewe, aja tulipe ule mtu wa elifu kumi. Ule mtu wa ten million. 
So they take you at 1,000 and pay. Oh, I'm going to the I'm going to chief. What are millions of men are supreme? Could you make a chief? What are you doing? And even the millionaire is not paid in the value of millions. He's paid in hundreds. Paid in hundreds. It's bad when a bank collapses. So God, see, because God is all-knowing, he decided he's going to bless you, Victor. Number one, he's going to bless you with a spiritual blessing. And number two, he's going to store that blessing for you in heavenly places where thieves cannot enter, where it is not affected by the economy. That's why you don't know who you are in Jesus, my friend. In Je if you're in Jesus, the economy does not affect you. You wonder what are people saying at you, oh, the economy is going bad. You, you are, your blessing is in a heavenly place and is in a spiritual format. Yes. Look, I went to Uganda. Uganda is poor. We were millionaires. In Uganda. In Uganda when we convert our money. One time we went to Tanzania with this guy. You converted around how much? Maybe like 15,000 Kenya shillings. Immediately, the money he was given, we had to call for security. <laughs> in Tanzania, do you remember? He had saying, hey, hey, I'm a millionaire. We had to ask for police escorts. <laughs> that is the one time in his life he was a millionaire. <laughs> the one time in his life he was a millionaire before now. Now he's about to become a millionaire because he's in Christ Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus, God decides, I'm going to bless Cecilia in a blessing and store it in a spiritual format, number one. Number two, I'm going to store that blessing for him in a heavenly place. That means the economy does not affect that blessing. The society does not affect that blessing. Thieves cannot access that blessing. That's why you must desire to know who you are in Jesus. Because in Jesus, your blessing is there. And number two, your blessing is secure. Then number three, he says this blessing is in Christ Jesus. Is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. If any man be in. So Jesus is not only a person. He is also a place. We are in a building. That means the building is over us. And we are under. Like we are inside. Right? So if the Bible says if any man be in Christ. What does it mean? It means we've entered into a place called Christ. So in this place called Christ. There are spiritual blessings. In this place called Christ. They are in heavenly places. That's why you must know who you are in Christ. The day you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's like you knocked on the door. In fact, the Bible says, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever who hears my voice and opens, I shall come in and dine with him. So the day you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you opened the door and entered. Sour. Now that you are in Christ, it's your business to start putting on the new man who grows in knowledge. And begin to see what is in this Jesus that is mine. Then in this scripture alone, you can see number one, you are blessed in heavenly places. Number one, you are blessed with spiritual blessings rather. And number two, your blessings are in heavenly places. Then number three, he tells you, you are in Christ. You are in Christ. You are in Jesus. You are in Jesus. So Solomon, even though he was wise, his blessings were not in a spiritual format. That's why if he was there today, maybe his, his, the value of his wealth would have depreciated. Perhaps would have depreciated. You understand? Look, there are many ways of storing value. Right? One way of storing value is Kenya shillings. You can store your value in Kenya shillings. Like right now, you have 10,000. It means your value in Kenya shillings is 10,000. Sawa. Another way of storing value is dollars. Sindio? You can decide me now, because I'm going to, you, I'm going to a country like uh, America. I don't want my money to reduce. So in Kenya, I'm going to be accumulating my money in dollars. So that even if I go there, if I have $10,000 here, yeah, I also have $10,000. It's a good way. Are we together? However, even there is inflation. So what $10,000 was worth last year is not what it is worth now. Sawa. There's also another way of storing value, which is gold. The value of gold does not depreciate. The value of gold appreciates. So, God realized that you can either store value in Kenya shillings, in dollars, or in gold. But he decided there's something higher than gold, and that is called a spiritual format. So he stored your blessing in a spiritual format that gains value 
over time and space. Because there's value over time and space. Bono maga mchanga yuko melewa. Anga pe melewa. That's why your blessings are in a spiritual place. They are in a spiritual, rather in a spiritual format. In a spiritual. That's why you are different from Solomon. So in fact, you need to become more successful than Solomon. Because what you have, Solomon did not have. Yet he became successful. He didn't even have the Holy Spirit. He had a spirit of wisdom, which is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, one of the spirits of the Lord, that would come on him and go. You, the Holy Spirit, resides in you. And you are in Christ. Solomon was not in Christ because Christ had not yet died. So he was not living in Christ. You, you are living in Christ. Why are you not successful like him? Because I can give you a car and tell you this car is in Mombasa. But for you to get this car, call Cecilia. Cecilia will take you to where that car is. So even if you have that car, the car is in your name, the, the KRA knows it, the logbook is in your name. If you never call Cecilia, you will never have that car. That is how many Christians are. They are in Christ Jesus, but they don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. So no matter how blessed you are, you are walking like a poor man. You are living like a poor man. The blessings of Christ are superior. So whatever I'm telling you today, I want you to look at it in that angle. I am blessed in a spiritual format. And my blessing is in a heavenly place. And it is in Christ and I am in Christ. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. Yes. So that is part of the things we'll be learning from Sunday. Yes. So Solomon managed to be successful by building something. If you want to become successful, Pastor Wangari, you must decide, I am going to build something. I am going to build something. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I am going to build something. I am going to build my life with you. Especially if you're sitting next to a single guy, and you're a lady, or you're a guy, and there's a single girl next to you. Tell them, I'm going to build my life with you. That's why you must learn to sit strategically. That's why you must learn to sit strategically. Na, na, na a girl next to you. I'm going to get in a Ian, Elvis. Three men. How will you help each other? Four men. How will you help each other? Yeah, look at that. That's why all of them are single. You must, you must, Christ the power, Christ the. I kill him to angle. You must, you must know who, where I am. Anyway. So Solomon was a wise man. And therefore, I would like you to know that it takes wisdom to build. It takes wisdom. Proverbs 24, verse 3. The Bible says, through wisdom is a house built. So we build because of wisdom. We don't build because of money. What builds is wisdom. So what you need to ask for is wisdom. And in fact, you already have it if you're in Christ. If you're in Christ, Christ the power. If you're in Christ, you're a very wise man, but you don't know. So I don't know why you're not building. I don't know why you're not building. You must start building. You must start building. You must start. You must start. Because building comes from wisdom, not from money. Buddha, we've not bought that land for the church because we have money. We have, in fact, you know, 17 bob. Matakos was told it's 9 bob. It's even worse. 9 bob. I said, hey, I thought 17 was low. Here we've got to 9 bob. I said, blessed be the Lord of our Father Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, Wamboi, you will not become rich when you get paid 200,000. No. No, 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 no. You can be paid 200,000 and you're poor. There are people like that. Sierra, you will not become rich the day you are paid 400,000. No. You'll become rich the day you learn that wisdom is what is used to make people rich. 
My wisdom is a house built, not by money. Are we together? Not by accumulation of, rather not by inflow of money, by accumulation of wealth. And accumulation of wealth comes from wisdom. By wisdom is a house built. Tell about by wisdom is a house built. People don't get married because they are financially stable. I repeat, people don't get married because they are financially stable. Like the neighbor who is next to you told you that me, I'll get married the day I get to financial stability. There is something called financial stability. By wisdom is a house built. So the house of marriage is built by wisdom. Not by financial stability. But look at you. You are saying, I'll... my good friends, don't, don't let the devil deceive your thinking. Don't let, don't let the devil deceive you into thinking that you cannot build a house. What is used to build is not money. It's wisdom. Wisdom is the currency of building. Repeat after me. Wisdom, wisdom. is the currency, the currency of building. And you have wisdom. And you have? Wisdom. Look, there are two types of people in the world. Number one, builders. And number two, users. Africa is made up of users and very few builders. Do you know why we go to Europe? Because they built their country. Do you know why Europeans don't come to our country? Because we've not built our country. This world is made up of builders and users. So builders are wise. They erect buildings that will be there for their lifetime. But users like you Enjoy facilities that have been erected by others. That's why you're always looking for which is the new apartment in this place. Numagani mpia tu ingi. Mina njaka tu nyumba mpia. Ikiaza kuzeeka na hama na enda ingine. When will you be saying, I'm, I'm thinking of building a, new, a building here so that people can come? You're a user. You're a user. People are always thinking, Mini mungu wa kinipatia tu do. Father, in the name of Jesus. People always looking to go where people have built. Now the center of uh, in earlier years, the center of the world. Okay, the center. In those days, in the days of Jesus, the center of the world was Jerusalem, the center of civilization. Then after him, the center of civilization was Rome, right? After Rome, the center of civilization was the English Empire, British, London. At a point in the world, everybody used to go to London. If you go to London, you, that's where the meeting point of the world was. Now the meeting point of the world is almost moving to Dubai. That's where like, the world meets right now. Mo most of the things you need in the world are in Dubai. Now, you are always thinking, Ile mungu, Ile siku mungu atanifungulia malangu wa jene Dubai. Me need you. Do you know why you're thinking like that? Eh? Do you know why you're thinking like that? Because you're a user. Africa is made up of users. We don't build our countries. We don't build. In fact, we try to bring down people who want to build. We want to bring them down. We call them names. In Kenya, if you become rich, they call you Illuminati. Wash, wash. They tell you you are a thief. They, 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 they wash, wash. You know, recently I was having a conversation with some, some guys here. And I told them I've realized something in Kenya. Kenyans hate greatness. Kenyans are offended with greatness. Kenyans are offended with greatness. Greatness offends Kenyans. Kenyans don't want anybody to be great. They, want to, they have a demon of equalization. Our conversation came from when people were attacking Elud Kipchoge on uh, Twitter. You saw that that time, saying that he's, he's, he's happy that I know that that guy has died. Kiptum has died or something like that. He has not even congratulated him. And because Ati Kiptum has broken a world record for marathon. I said, how can you compare Ki Elud Kipchoge to Kiptum? Kiptum is just a one night wonder, one marathon. Elud Kipchoge has how many titles on him? Elud Kipchoge has entered into the league of elites. Elites. Buddha, who am say 
ako na gari custom made yake all a specific number a limited edition with the name Kipchoge signed Isuzu D-Max look at the kind of sponsors he has Nike the guy does not need to run ever in his life again he has a parking spot at Nike written Elud Kipchoge he doesn't need to run ever in his life he doesn't need to run he is not nowadays he's not running to win He's running because him being in that race makes the race very important. Him running in Nairobi Marathon makes Nairobi Marathon very important. Not Nairobi Marathon is being made important. Or Nairobi Marathon is making Kipchoge important. It is him making. That is the league he has entered to. And if you compare him with a guy who has just started his career. A 20-something year old. And just because he defeated him in one marathon. He was not even, I said, I said, you guys, you don't value greatness. You don't value? Great. It is in Kenya, you see, we attack our great people. Yeah. If someone rises to become great, instead of hailing him and pushing him to become more, we start calling him names. We start finding ways of bringing him down. We start sl slandering him. Girls start looking for ways to have sex with him so that they can expose him. Yeah. Yes. It's Kenya. It's Kenya. Who do you know that is great in Kenya that has not been attacked? Even your own president, you fight him. Your own president, you fight him. You have a nickname for him. You have a nickname for him. He has no rest. You liked him when he was not anything. When he was not anything, you liked him. You, you called him names. You said, this is our guy, our savior. As a nation. The day he became great... You started hating him, Zakayo. You started, you started having issues with him. Rikiji, when he was nothing, you liked him. You even called him Rikiji. <laughs> when the trousers were baggy and the courts were, you, you were almost okay. Then he became a deputy president. Look at even musicians, how we bring them down. We have international musicians. Look, look, at, like, look at Saudi Soul. They are a secular, a secular artist. But those people have gone to heights that no Kenyan musician has gone to. They have gone to heights no Kenyan musician has gone to. Those people go to Europe and fill up a, a whatever, a, a, an arena. Which Kenyan musician do you know can do that? But you see Kenyans fighting them. Oh, they're, they're talking. They're, they're, they're. Instead of realizing these people are great, Kenyans are offended by greatness. Oh, greatness offends Kenyans. Kenyans. Sadly, it offends them. And it's an evil thing. One person in scripture who was offended by greatness was Judas. Judas was offended by greatness of Jesus. One of the reasons why he betrayed Jesus was because he was offended by the greatness of Jesus. He said, how can they spend... That kind of money to pour on his feet. How, How can they use... The, because the fragrance that was poured on Jesus' feet was worth one year's wage. They said, instead of pouring that kind of perfume in his feet, shouldn't we sell and give to the poor? That statement looks like a logical statement. But it's a statement of somebody who is offended by greatness. They don't want greatness to be celebrated. And that is the story of Kenyans. We enjoy pulling down people. Look at preachers. Look at someone like Ezekiel. Buddha, the guy feels Kas Kasarani. Do you know what it is to feel Kasarani Stadium? Twice. He filled it twice. 60,000 people. So if he filled it twice, it won 20,000 people. One man. Then you see, you talk. You talk. Look at someone like Benihin when he was coming. Look at the level of greatness the man is. The man comes to a country, the president goes for his meeting. Yeah. And, sits and sits down the whole time. From beginning to the end. With his deputy. With his deputy. And several, and the wives. Yeah. And several MPs. Yeah. Several government officials seated there listening to him. Yeah. That is someone who is holding the government at his hands. That is greatness. Yeah. But look at Kenyans. 
Wewe na um, 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 you are attacking greatness from a bed sitter. Na ring light ya 6000. 6000 ni mingi. Ring light ya pesa ngapi? 2000. You are there making TikTok videos attacking greatness. Attacking greatness. Instead of desiring it, you are attacking it. Na watu hujalipa rent, ukaribu kufungiwa nyumba. Na umelala nja. Kenya tuko na ni bundles za store bonus. Oko wajazi. Ama wifi ya neighbor umeiba. And you are attacking greatness. Look, I realized when, when, when that thing happened, I told myself, Kenyans, unless God helps us, it is bad. That's why we don't have anybody in Kenya who we can hail as great. Because if they try to get great, we break them down. Now when the, the band that we thought would become very great, we fought them, they disintegrated. Now they stopped singing. Now you are happy. Asa imbeni bas. Asa imbeni bas. Imbeni sasa. The preachers who are rising, they become great. When they are almost getting to greatness, they start influencing other nations. You call them atishakahola, sijui what. You paint their name. It's, that, is the, that is the same strategy Jesus used, Satan used on Jesus. It's the same strategy. But you don't know. You don't see it because you don't think you can become great. And Buddha, let me tell you something. If one person breaks into greatness, many others can break into it. Amen. Because he has, resi- he has fought and conquered as a force that keeps others from becoming great. So if you have one great person, do you know why marath- in Kenya ma- breaking a marathon record is easy? There are people who broke marathon records earlier. Yeah. So they already motivated the people behind them. If we did it, you can do it. So that's why we are always breaking marathon records. Yeah. Do you know why it is hard for us to win Africa Cup of Nations football? Mm-hmm. Nobody has ever won in Kenya. Mm-hmm. So we don't, even, we don't even have an imagination that it can be done. We have no point of reference. We have no point of reference from our own. We don't even know when we play. We don't even know who is in the team. You don't even know the coach. And you know him because he plays for a foreign team that has accelerated his greatness and lifted him. But when we are keyboard warriors, like ring light, remember when it's on Billy? Eight hundred. Ring light, you're 800. You are there attacking. You are attacking a preacher like Benny Hinn, someone who is coming into the country. A whole nation is at standstill. But one time I looked at his life. 100,000 people were watching on one. I said, hey boss. 100,000 gadgets. Again, I'm told it is live on Citizen TV. Kidogo, kidogo, I see the president coming in and sitting. I said, this is the one you're talking about. Mutu wa kiambu. Mutu wa kiambu. And the only thing you have is social media followers. Do you know social media can deceive you? Social media actually is deception. Social media is thinking you built something yet you built nothing. You get what I mean? It deceives you you built something but you built nothing. Now that you have one million followers, those are just virtual numbers. It doesn't mean you have actual one million followers influence. It doesn't mean you influence one million people. You have virtual people who just follow you in a virtual world. But in the real world, you have no such influence. Then you are attacking somebody who has the influence in a real world. Influencing people with two kidneys. Influencing people with one stomach. Making people stay in the rain. People are being rained on. Are we in the home? Wakuapo. On rain. Wakuapo. Can't that show you this is this something that is here? Can't you just put your mind? Just exercise your mind. So Judas was offended by the greatness of Jesus. He had an issue. He had an issue. He, he th- How can perfume worth one year's wage be poured on someone? Jesus told him, the poor you'll always have among you. Look at that. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? That, that, is the, that is the attitude of people who don't value greatness. So him to him, 300 denarii 
was far much than Jesus. He felt that Jesus is lower than 300 denarii. So 300 denarii was far higher than the value of Jesus. If you're given Jesus and 300 denarii, what will you take? In Jesus, how many 300 denarii are there? Infinity. Infinity. He's the creator of everything. But you value 300 denarii over someone who, over the creator of the universe. That's the same thing people, people don't see the value of pastor. People don't see the value of a pastor. Judas was pastored by one of the best pastors in the world. Judas was pastored by one of the best pastors in the world. And even the other disciples were pastored with one of the best pastors in the world. But from, this, from that, this one best pastor of the world, there came forth traitors and there came forth apostles. So the problem is not the pastor. Stop changing churches. The problem is not the pastor. The problem is you. You are the, soil. You, you are the ground that the seed is coming into. You are, the, you are the soil that the seed is coming into. Was Jesus the problem? If Jesus was the problem, why did he produce Peter? Rock. Why did he produce John? Why did he produce Luke? If Jesus was the problem, So that clearly shows you Jesus is not the problem. The problem is the soil in which the seed is falling. The pastor is not the problem. The church is not the problem. You can change a church a million times if you like. If you don't change you, you don't change the, the, the recipient of the word which is your heart, your soil, I can tell you for a fact, you will keep going from one church to another and never have a changed life. And never have a changed life. You can go to any church you want. A new prophet can come who is flying. You can go there. You will not fly. You will not fly. Until the day you realize it has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with me. And I and decide I'm going to be planted in one place. And then change my heart. You will see. You will see. You will see. That same Jesus met one woman, a Syrophoenician woman. And that woman ran into a whole town declaring of the greatness of Jesus. She saw it. And Judas, who walked with Jesus, ate with Jesus, lived with Jesus, saw the miracles, understood the parables, because Jesus would speak to parables in the crowds and tell them the meanings in private did not see the greatness of Jesus. He took 30 pieces of silver over the life of Jesus. Over the life of Jesus. Yet one woman encountered Jesus at 12. So perhaps they had a conversation for like one hour or less. But she saw the value of Jesus and went and to a whole town. Come and see a man who has told me who I am. And they brought, they brought people to Jesus. And the Bible says that now they believe not because of what she said, but because of who they, when they had and saw him. Yet Judas, who was walking with Jesus, living with Jesus, experiencing Jesus in his fullness, daily, for three years, took 30 pieces of silver over the life of Jesus. You can be in the midst of greatness and not realize it. You can think this church is just like any other church. Wait until you go. Someone was telling us yesterday that he realized that what is here is not everywhere. It's not everywhere. But when you are in the midst of greatness, it is very easy for you to miss it. Because greatness does not look like greatness. Jesus didn't look like it, bro. Even you would have been Judas. Even me. Don't think that all those But when he was there walking and living, we would have been even worse than Judas. Maybe to get 20 bob. Maybe to get 20 bob. I'm a free. I'm a free. Look at how you treat your pastor today. Is exactly how you would have treated Jesus. Because your pastor is a representative of who? Jesus. How you treat him? 
How you treat that shepherd in the love group is exactly how you would have treated Jesus. Because that shepherd is doing it on whose account? Jesus' account. Jesus' account. The way you are stubborn with him, he calls you, you don't pick. I can tell you for a fact, Jesus would have called you and you will not pick. That's why you should attack an enemy. Guy. Oh, Jesus has not had a national to be a 20 and a castle, 20 evangelism. Oh, I'm sending you two by two. Go forth and make disciples. What is that now? She had to watch it to God. Jesus. You can be in the midst of greatness and not see it. Yeah. You can see a guy. He's a friend to a lady who is a wife. Like this is a wife. A, a wife. You know, you are those girls who are wives. But she doesn't see this is a wife. She goes and gets another girl, stranger girl who comes in. Muliganas just because she has hips. She was in the midst of greatness. She was, she was in the presence of the answers she has been praying for. But she forgo. <laughs> she forgo the answers to her prayer and took a girl who is brown. Who is muliganas. The only thing she has is the color brown. Is the color brown. And lips and hips and fingertips. That's all. Then you see another girl. He is a friend to a guy who is a husband. By all standards. A one. Because you can know a husband before they become a husband. You can know a husband. You can see how they carry themselves. You can know who you know. Who you know. You can tell Dicky, you can't get a lot of money. 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 You can't get But you see, a whole girl would leave her husband to go for someone when you can't get a lot of money. Deadly, deadly. And I can't get a lot of money. Me, I like cool boys. I like bad boys. Hmm? And I suck. And you all of my vagina arm. Wale wako, wale. And you leave a husband. For. Beard gang. Ati atuna mpena juwa nini? Akona ndevu. Akona kifua. Anenanga TikTok live. Anafanya? Anafanya? I don't know what it means. It means bad. Does it mean something bad? No, anafanya? Anafanya? Atengeza eyebrows. I'll be doing that to my wife. <laughs> Style deadly, deadly. Mastingoni deadly, deadly. Style deadly, deadly. Unaacha a whole husband. Unaacha a whole. That's what I was telling you. You have not even built your life. Because value is in front of you, but you can't identify value. Last night I was talking to a guy. I was having a conference call with two guys. I asked them one question. I asked them, please let me know what is your definition of value? How do you measure value? Then the parameters were two. Value is content over time or time over content. I asked them, what, tell me what's your definition of value. Is value to you content, even if the time is limited, just one hour, but the content you've been given, that one hour is nothing. What you've been given, you can, you can work it out for 20 years. Or we spend three days with you, but the content I've given you is for two days. What is value to you? I was surprised at the answer. I left there saying, hey, I was surprised. 
So some of you, value is walking in front of you, but you don't know the value. You don't know value. The Bible says, having eyes, but they do not see. Having ears, but they can't hear. You have eyes, but you can't see. You can't see value. That's why you don't value the Bible. You would rather read novels than value the Bible. You would rather be on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. You would rather watch a movie the whole night than spend the whole night praying. Or spend the whole night watching a sermon. Or several sermons. You are comfortable spending the whole night watching a movie because you don't know value. Even if value is in front of you. You don't know value. That's why you can't build anything. Man Solomon was valuable because he could build something. Leaders build something. And you can't be able to build if you can't see value. If you can't identify value. If you can't identify building as value. You will never do it. So you will never become rich. God gives you money. The first thing you think about is how you can buy a big TV and a big fridge. 70 inch. No, they were telling me 75. Kim, you're telling me 75 or 70 what? 75. Tell me, Pastor, me if I get money, 75 inch. A whole wall. I said, in my heart, I said, you're a small boy. That's why you are poor. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But even the rich don't do that. The ones who have the money. You, that's your dream. <laughs> the rich have bigger libraries. The poor have bigger screens. What has brought me here is the books I read, the knowledge I know. The knowledge I know. I have my, if I show you my library, right, right now I have, I have over a thousand books. I'm always adding. The one who gets my book can tell you. The one who goes to buy my books. Tell her, get this, get this book for me, get this book for me. Every, it's like every week I'm getting a new book. If I want to study a topic, like there's a topic I've been studying, I got every available book from credible others on that topic. I got them. Now I'm studying that topic. When I come to teach it, I look like a master. When it is implemented, I'll be a master. Because I have... I spent my time studying that. I can, I can open it upside down. I can flip it upside down. I can see something and say, that is what you are doing. The end result will be this. Have I told you this like that before? I told you, Hapa, when I end up early. How did I get it? I've spent my time. I've spent my time. That's why we respect doctors. Because a doctor is someone you respect. Because the guy has spent seven years studying human anatomy. He knows everything about your body. A doctor, I saw a certain video of some doctor who was complaining that we are comparing them to engineers. He was saying, doctor can remove your heart. I work a candle. I could change it. you have a nini, I have to your heart. Hafu am comparing the engineer and I don't have to compare Say, no, no, you cannot compare us. And it's true. You can't compare a doctor to an engineer. A doctor is someone you respect. A doctor can look at your eyes and tell you you're suffering from liver issues. You, you've been looking at those eyes and you thought it's, you're, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, so <laughs> money dust me. Beautiful eyes. I have sleepy eyes. Beautiful eyes. I'm going to go to No value. Identify value. The things I teach you here is a lot of, is high value. But you can see somebody who is here and does not identify it as value. Those things apply in church. That's why your life is. I told you what you learn for church. It's not for church. It's for life. Discipleship is life. Life for life. What Jesus is teaching you is to, is to do life. 
But where because you have a small mind, it tells you that is for church. You near church. But church is the school of life. I repeat, church is the school of life. There is no any other school that teaches you about life but the church. Doctors are not taught how to, be, to live a life. They are taught the profession of medicine. That's why we have very great doctors who are very miserable as a person. But if they start talking about medicine, oof. you can see lawyers who are very good lawyers when they start discussing about law. But in, as a person, they are miserable. You can see teachers who can teach a toddler how to write and a toddler writes. But in life, they are miserable. Because even though they went to schools of profession, they didn't have a school for life. And a church is a school for life. Like this church but in particular, it is a school for life. I have taught you about marriage. I have taught you about success. I have taught you about money. I have taught you about every sphere of life. Career, education, anything you can mention. Someone has spoken to you about it. Is that what you want what is life? That's life, right? But you see somebody who is here, he does not identify value. That's why his life is not built. Having eyes and they see not. Having eyes and they see not. Learn to identify value when it walks in. Learn to identify value when? Judas could not identify the value of Jesus. He could not identify it. Other kings who came after Solomon could not identify the value of building. That's why there are no kings who traveled from afar to come and sit down to be counseled by them. But Solomon, when he identified the value of building, queens and kings from afar would come and sit. Remember when we were reading in First Kings that Solomon had some things that kings had not heard about, other kings had not heard about, but Solomon had them in his reign, in his kingdom. And they respected him because Solomon identified value. The value of building. Identify value. You are in a very good decade. It's called the decade of decision and discovery. This decade, God has helped you discover gold in a mentor. Do not miss the value of your mentor. And then you live a life of misery. Because this decade is not going to repeat itself. Ay ay. I know my, some of my friends here, they've already passed that to me. <laughs> they've already passed. I know some of my friends there on the left, some of them. On the right, on the left. Not, not here. Up ahead, I'm behind. I'm, I'm just saying. On the left, on the right, in front and behind. Some are not getting. All over. All over, whatever. <laughs> They're everywhere. They have passed that decade. They will not get that decade again. So if they didn't discover, then make decisions based on what they discover. You may end up. You may? You are in that phase. 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 You are Nne, wewe ni ngapi? Sita, wewe ni ngapi? Nne. Nne. Lutu wakitoka hivi. Na wewe umeingia. Na wewe umeingia. Genio. You've not discovered. Genio nilisikia nanga shida na mtu kwa hii kanisa. Hakuna mtu nasama genio wa shai nizushia. Oh, sorry, man of God, man of God. Maybe he thinks that's a good thing, but that shows the personality he's in. He has allowed the negative traits to overshadow the positive. Now he has become weak in leadership. And that can translate to weaknesses in many other areas. Manu unanga shida na mtu. Watu ni unafanyanga tu watu. You 
think you'll remain forever young? Eh? You think you're going to remain forever 26? Boss, I remember how I felt when I was 24. I remember how I felt. I know I, I don't even I did not even notice that I'm changing. I didn't notice. Nothing has changed. How I was five years ago is how I am now, like physically speaking. But now I'm 29. I don't know how I got here. At, at a point, someone who used to ask me my age, I forget. I say an age that I already passed. At a point, I still thought I was 25. So someone would ask you, now, now how old are you? 25. But I already passed 25 two years ago. My point is, you're not going to remain where you are forever. And then I could chase you attack on my shako. Chase you attack. I don't see you save you. I don't see what they is. Don't follow Jesus. Sawa? Eh. Ipo siku. Ipo? Siku. When you talk about me, I want to ask you, oh, excuse me, I want to ask you. Excuse me, I want to ask you. Excuse me, Eh? Oh, you want to ask me, I want to ask you. Eh? I think I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. I want to ask you. Bibiangu ya naasha jiko. Mtu wangu ya nakatakata matumbo. Eh? Eh? Ana ana anaasha anaosha matumbo. Ananawisha wageni. Hii anafungua soda na meno. Kwa nini mwamboshe ifanyishwe hivyo? Ndugu yangu. Ukisema ukisema tu kusikiza ma statements za am. Ha? Oh, watu wanajifanya huku. Atisikizi juu watu wameoa. Hmm? Si atunanga mabibi watu atu, atuongeleshi. Ah. Eh, tangu pate mtu. Jua unaongea na mtu ambayo reality imeanza kufanya nini? Kudon. Na anakumbuka ali waste opportunities. Alifanya nini? Ali waste opportunities. Opportunities are not forever. Opportunities are not the opportunity of being young is not forever. The opportunities of having a good mentor are not forever. Eh, they are not forever. The access. What makes you think that with this Tuesday service will always be there? What makes you think? Do you think when we have like 200 churches, I might be having time to do a Tuesday service? When will I visit those churches or will I do a Tuesday service? At that point, I have many international engagements. And you think, is that, that's the time you're going to connect with me? Now, you don't see the value, you don't, you don't create a personal relationship. When the thing is an international scale, a global scale is when you want me to know you're called Elvis. Wow. <laughs> Do you know when is the best time to know the next president? Is now. The best time to know a president is when he's not yet a president. If I wanted to know Ruto, I should have known him when he was a minister or an MP. Weak or a chicken seller, even better. And I maintain that relationship all along. Now that he's president, you'd still know me. We would be friends. He would be calling me, we take tea together. Because we've been friends for many years. Now, for me to make him a friend, hey, unless the hand of God intervenes. But it's not, I, I, see that I see. See that I see. But you don't know who you are seated next to. You might be seated with the next president of Kenya. You are seated next to a bishop. But you have no idea. You are saying, English, you bishop, you are saying, Aje, Aje. The best time for Judas to receive Jesus was before he ascended. Was before he ascended. After Jesus ascended, he was glorified. He was glorified. That was the best time. And that is why the people who benefited from, who have thrones in heaven with their names on it, you, you don't have a throne in heaven with your name on it. You have a throne because of what you do, but no name. 
Hey. No wonder. Look, many of you don't have, not all of us, we have thrones but no name. Right? But Peter, James, John, they have a throne with their names on it. As Jesus is judging the 12 tribes of Israel, they are also there standing, judging with him. Because the best time to know Jesus is before he ascended. That was the best time to know him. The best time to make him your friend was that. You get what I mean by that? Yes. That was the best time. You must learn to identify value when you see value. Identify value when you see value. Don't have eyes that you can't see. For the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that they should. I should hear them. The best time to know Jesus is now. The best time to serve Jesus is now. The best time for Jesus to know your name is now. Is now. The best time to make relationships that are lasting is now. That's why your shepherd is someone you should respect. Your shepherd. Do you know why you should respect him? He's honing his skills on leadership. You don't know where those skills he's learning will take him. So when he's trying to teach you, you don't know he's teaching you. One, you realize that the person who was your shepherd is a chief justice of Kenya. If you had maintained that relationship, you'd be having access to the chief justice. You, who wouldn't be happy to know the chief justice of Kenya on speed dial? Wouldn't you not be happy? Wouldn't you not be happy? But look, you thought that shepherd is just a shepherd. Deadly, deadly. Can I finish? Can I malo? You finish? You malo. Na kazi ni kudonjo na kudunda. Aye sawa. Louis. You don't know what JJ will become. Na sai JJ ai kuongelesha na mpita. Una mkata. JJ una mkata. Una mpita na kwambia you know I like you. Nasema first like yourself. Eh? It's a good thing. It's a good desire. It's Aisha too. Because you don't know how to identify value. Solomon became great because he identified value. The value of building. He spent all his income in building. Look, the guy even built a city for chariots. Like his garage for chariots was a city. Solomon built a temple that up to now we refer to. Are you from Uganda? Or just a t-shirt? You get my point? He built a temple that we refer to up to now. In fact, the most famous kings of Israel is David and Solomon. Do you know in, uh, Israel had a, and had a king called Manasseh? Some of you are hearing for the first time, but there was a king like that. There were many kings. Do you know, there was a king called Ahab. But there's no city of Ahab. But the city of David. Up to now, Jerusalem is called the city of David. Up to now, the city of David. In fact, the flag of Israel has the stars of David. The four rings. No, not rings, the, four, the stars. They are called the stars of David. Because they did what? They built something. They, 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 they identified the value of things. I don't know what God is saying to you today. But I'm sure he's saying something to you. And he's saying something very serious. You may never hear it again. Identify value. Identify? Value. Identify value. Make the connections you need to make now. Make the decisions you need to make now. Be in the places you need to be now. So let me give you a story. When UDA started, yeah? You know UDA? Yeah. UDA party, eh? 
they wanted uh, volunteers. It didn't start as a big thing. They wanted volunteers. So one of the tea girls in those offices had that they wanted volunteers to go and work in that office for free. So she went and started working. In those, she volunteered herself. Either she became a tea girl or something. I can't remember the whole story. Then see, UDS started taking tractions. They are still there working, nothing. Then just before the election, I think Ruto said, I can't remember clearly, said that all these guys who are here, they should be given direct tickets to go and buy for any position they want and they should be sponsored to buy. One of those people who now is giving this story is now an elected MCA from a Tigal. From a Tigal. She's not an elected MCA. <laughs> I said, this is, person, this is a person who saw value and identified value. When no one else was seeing value and identifying. Now, she, where she is seated, now to vie with that ticket for that party, I, I'm sure it's not easy. The money you have to pay. And even if you have money, the connections, you're not even a guaranteed. Now they are gatekeepers. Before when he was starting, they were not gatekeepers. They were insulted. They were insulted. They were yellow, nini. But that's why I'm saying, pray that you have eyes that see, that can identify value <laughs> when it is starting, when it is there. You don't know the value. You don't know where this TGL is going. You might be in this thing that you... But this past weekend, I just realized this thing is going somewhere. This, this thing is going somewhere. I just said, God is in this thing. And there's a place this thing is going to. Because I could see. I, I couldn't believe it. And I'm going to Machakos. There are over 300 people seated in Machakos. Listening. A whole weekend. I told myself, this thing is going somewhere. Identify value. I keep telling you, at this phase of the ministry, it is easy to be anything. A point will come in the ministry. We are even being a shepherd. Being a shepherd. And remember the Bible says that your significance is in what you are part of. What you are part of. Hey, katoa kwa shepherd. A time will come. Okay, let me give you an example. You know Bishop Doug, right? Yes. Bishop Doug has like 4,500 churches. Do you think the people who knew him when he, when he started and maybe did not identify value, do you think right now they can get close to him? The guy has three hospitals. Not two. Three, the ministry. Forgive me for using the name guy. I should be respectful enough. Like the bishop has. Three churches. He has a dozen of schools. Like the ministry. He's at a president. He's almost like a president. I'm sure there are people who knew him. In fact, there's a story he gives of how a certain guy who knew him when they were starting. So he, when the ministry was going, growing, it was not as it ought to be, and as, as it had grown right now, then he says this guy came to his office and he was ushered into his office after trying to look for him for a long time. Then when he sat down, he was so, he was so uncomfortable. Then Bishop asked him, so, so what's the problem? He said, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this. He was asked, what? I'm not used to you sitting there. <laughs> I'm not used to you sitting on that desk. I'm not used to this. I'm, I'm the one who used to sit there. I'm not used to this. <laughs> the bishop told him, hey, you didn't identify value. You didn't identify value when he's around you. Yeah. It's like another value you need to identify is the value of tribulation. When you are going through problems, it is value you need to identify. Many of you do not know. The Bible says that through much tribulation, we enter heaven. That is to say, tribulations is a door. Anytime there is tribulation in your life, there is something you are entering into. But because you don't know how to identify value, tribulation comes into your life and it passes. Without you knowing, what was God taking me into? Because with much tribulation, we shall enter the kingdom of God. With much tribulation. So tribulation is a door into the kingdom. Snow you up. We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation.
enter the kingdom. So tribulation is a door. When you are going through tribulation in your marriage, tribulation in your life, tribulation in your ministry, it is a door. But because you don't know how to identify value, it comes and passes. So you never enter into what you are supposed to enter. The face you are in is a face of tribulation, right? There is something you are entering into. But because you have no value, or you are rather you have no eyes to identify value, the, the thing comes and passes. You don't know the value of fast fruits. You don't know how valuable it is. So the test of fast fruit comes and it passes you. Naikula yote. It passes you. Duguzangu, <laughs> may you have eyes that see. May you have eyes? May you have eyes? I pray for all of you. May you have eyes that see. May you have eyes that see 10 years from now. May you have eyes that see 20 years from now. May you have what? Eyes. Eyes that do what? See. Eyes that see. Always pray for your eyes. Say, Jesus, give me eyes that see. People don't know the value of Jesus. I was like that. I knew Jesus in my head. But I didn't know Jesus in my heart. Until Jesus revealed himself to me. Now his value. There are songs now when we sing. They mean a whole different thing to me. They mean a whole different thing to me. In fact, just before I came in, Pastor Eddie wrote me a message that after he listened to the Machakos camp, he listened to the song, How Wonderful Is Your Name. Jesus, how wonderful your name. You mean so much to me now that I see you as you are. There is no greater things for me to do now than to get to know you more. Jesus, how wonderful you name. Tell me, Pastor, this song now means something different to me. When I sing it now, it is different. The value of that name is different. How did it get there? He identified the value of Jesus from hearing, from being taught. I've mentioned several values you have to identify, but some of you have just, just been looking at me. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't even notice that there are things I'm mentioning that are worth talking note of. Value has come and passed you. Having eyes, they see. Having ears, they have. But they don't see, neither do they hear. You were just looking at me. But you did not notice that at a moment the Holy Spirit came in. You didn't notice at a moment a particular face. Now, I don't know if you remember what the Holy Spirit was telling you. Because you were just there. You're actually powerful. Wait, 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 wait. Leo. Wait, 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 wait. Hey. At all, one evil. Apo, Leo, Pastor. Kuna Malia Mengia. You missed your moment. It's deep. You missed your moment. It's just like the guy who, who used to stay by the pool for 35 years. And anytime the angel would come and stir the waters, he was unable to jump in. So it's not like the angel would not come. The angel would come. But he would not discern the moment the angel has come. I pray for you to have eyes that see and ears that hear. Identify value. Identify the value of Jesus. Identify the value of Jesus. Identify who you are in Jesus. Identify the value of who am I in Jesus. Identify that value. Identify it. That is the difference between life and death. The difference between success and failure. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for helping us to understand many things today. Thank you for revealing yourself in a way we didn't think you'd reveal yourself. Help us to see. Help us to know. Help us to hear. And help us to understand. In Jesus' name.
Jesus, how wonderful your name You mean so much to me now that I see you as you are And there's no better thing for me to do now than to get to know you more Jesus How wonderful your name Jesus How wonderful your name You mean so much to me now There is no greater thing for me to do now than to get to know you more, Jesus.